I went to a distant city from where I lived to make a speech to a group of senior citizens. But there were people there from all ages. They weren't all senior citizens. There were families there, and young and old. And uh, during the presentation, which was not on ghost our mothers or on ghost our families, I was speaking about patriotism, service to community, service to country, and that type of thing. That was the theme of my presentation. But in that presentation, I mentioned the fact that we do not have anything in the country that pays tribute to those who gave a loved one. When I finished, everybody left the hall. I never a good-sized crowd there. Uh, everybody left the hall except one man. And he was about halfway down the hall. And when I turned around, I'd gathering my stuff up, getting ready to leave, my briefcase and that type of stuff. And I turned around, and there he stood. And I said, uh, is there something I could do for you, something I could help you? And I still got no response from him. So I turned around, picked up my stuff, and started to walk toward him. But before I could move, he began walking toward me. He walked up to oh, within 10, 12 feet of me and stopped. And tears were rolling down his cheeks. And the only thing he said to me was, Dad's cry too. So I said, well, would you share that with me? Could we sit down here and talk for a few minutes? So he and I sat down, and he told me that he, his son, had gone to Afghanistan. The mother had died prior to the boy going into the military, so he was a single dad. And then his boy got killed. So he said, I had no brothers, and no other family. So he said, I'm it. So I suffered alone. And at that point in time, on the way back from there, it was about 120 miles home. And I got to thinking, why am I concentrating on just one person? I know mothers grieve, and probably grieve greater than other people, because that's part of her that she lost. But I thought, I've got to change this, this goal. Let's go with families rather than a single person. So that's where the idea came from. And we'd been attempting to get a uh, veteran state cemetery in our state for a long, long time because we had no state veteran cemetery. We had a national cemetery run by the VA up northern part of the state. But most of the people in our area down south and southeast of West Virginia, they didn't go up there for burial. Very few of them did because of the distance. Finally, the legislature authorized that we could have a state cemetery. So the uh, VA and the state got together and built or opened this $14.8 million cemetery. So <clears throat> that was the ideal place to place a memorial honoring Gold Star families. And that's how it all came about. Then we decided, uh, Brent and I and my daughters and other people talking, let's, let's see if we can't form a foundation and see if we can't get this in other communities, because we know there are Gold Star families in those other communities. And we were starting out thinking primarily of the state of West Virginia. We have a Veterans Memorial that has 11,000 names on it of people who were killed in combat. That was one of the requirements to be on the memorial. They had to be killed in combat. So. Uh, we were thinking more of Gosar families in the state, but it kept getting a little bigger and a little bigger, and finally we decided, well, let's, let's just go national with this thing. Let's see if we can't do something in every state, because every state has those people. And right now, we're, we've got about uh, six states are right on the verge, and some of them are, are dead sure, it, you know, it's going to happen. I think the first one will probably be uh, 
constructed at uh, the uh, Medal of Honor Grove at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. I imagine they've already got the funds, and I imagine that will be the first one that actually gets completed. But we have other communities that uh, are working on fundraising and get it, gathering the information together, forming committees so that they can do this sort of thing. Whatever the people want to do, it's, it's, it's their choice. I put a barn <laughs> and a plowed ground because I was born and raised on a dairy farm. I grew up in that environment, and that was my life, and that's how I got started. So to me, that, that says to me, that's my homeland. But it's the homeland of an awful lot of people who have been in the farm business and dairy business all their life, you know. You may want to put a factory there or something, you know. It's up to the community or the committee. One of the, one of the scenes, the last scene on the monument, is the scene of a mother and a father and a brother and a sister sitting in lawn chairs and the mother and father is, and she's got a folded flag that we present at burial lost ones. And she's holding that in her lap, and there's an empty chair sitting there. And that represents the grieving family with the missing. And that family, they want no publicity, they don't even want people to know who, who they are, but they lost two sons in Afghanistan, one killed while there, the other one wounded and died shortly after he got home. So they represent this grieving family, and everybody grieves. 